Mount Wellington is one of the most well-known mountains in Tasmania and there is a wide variety of bushwalks that you can do on it. So basically in this video I'm going to list my top five must-do walks in Wellington Park. There are plenty to choose from, I've done a fair few of them and I'm going to kick things off. Number five is going to be the Collins Vale Peaks. So there are three, there are three peaks that come under the name Collins Vale Peaks. Collins Bonnet, Collins Cap and Trestle Mountain. So I've never done all three at once, but you can easily do it. You start down at Collins Vale, you walk up the Myrtle Forest Track and there's some really nice forest and, and you follow a really nice creek along there. Nice sort of waterfall there too. And the higher up you get, you know, there's a little section near Collins Bonnet where I felt like I was walking somewhere in the southwest, to be quite honest. A little bit of fire trail walking, but the views from the top of those peaks are outstanding. Collins Bonnet and Tristan Mountain are both ables, so there's a reason to climb them. You get peak, bag peak baggers points as well, but most importantly, they're just great places to be. You know, Collins Bonnet and Tristan Mountain make up Sleeping Beauty, which is what you see from the Huon Valley. So hence, you're going to get great views down the Huon Valley. And on a clear day, you can also see way out towards the southwest. You know, I'm pretty sure I've seen Federation Peak from one of those mountains before. And Collins Cap, while not an able, is still well worth a visit. You get good views of the uh, Derwent Valley area, Mount Dromedary as well. You're looking back across towards uh, the other mountains as well, like Colin, Collins Bonnet from Collins Cap is a good view. So that comes in at number five for me. It's easily done as a day trip. You can also visit them like Collins Bonnet from the Big Bend Fire Trail. Uh, at number four, I have Cathedral Rock. So Cathedral Rock, you access from Betts Road, which is down near Longley, and um, yeah, it's definitely well worth the visit. You know, you follow the Northwest Bay River, which I really enjoy. It's dolerite rocks, but they almost look like granite, um, the colour of them. And then, then you start going up some switchbacks, which bit of drag, but you know, the higher up you go, the more you kind of get anticipate, get excited for the end. You know, that lure of a mountain top. It's only 800 odd metres high, but it is it's just sensational when you get up there. The, the steep drop off the cliffs, the sheer nature of it, and you get good views across that valley. You can see where the pipeline track goes. You can see the tower on the top of Mount Wellington. You can see Mount Montague. You can see the Huon Valley, Bruny Island. And, um, and Cathedral Rock is visible from King, like Kingston when you're driving up the Huon Highway. It just stands out and it's definitely a place you have to visit. Number two, three for me is the Organ Pipes track. So the Organ Pipes track is part of that maze of tracks on the eastern side of Mount Wellington and if you start at the chalet, it's, that's the best way to access this track. So I think at the time as I'm making this video, it's actually closed but for up track upgrades, but that'll only make it better. You, it's a flat track, you're walking right underneath the Organ Pipes, which uh, the most famous part of Mount Wellington, those cliffs you can see from Hobart. So you're going within metres of them. And every now and then you get a track that branches off for rock climbers. If you go up one of them, you just get this really, really good view of the organ pipes. And you know, if you, have, you just have to do that walk on Mount Wellington. It's one of the ones you just can't miss. Number two for me is, it doesn't have a name, but I'm calling it the Low Altitude Circuit. So you start at the springs and you encompass many of those lower highlights. So this is a good walk to do on a maybe not so good weather day. So you, this, you go, you do a small little circuit and you go by the likes of Radford's Monument, which is a tribute to the person who died there in a go as you please race. There's a little bit more history about it there. You go via Rocky Whelan's Cave for a bush ranger hungout. O'Grady's Falls, nice little waterfall that one. Uh, the octopus tree, which you'll see why it's called octopus tree when you get there. Uh, and then of course Sphinx Rock, which is a nice sandstone outcrop where you get really good views from. And it's a, yeah, like I said, it's a good circuit to do if you have cloudy weather, rainy weather, or if you just don't feel like going up into the cold on the top of the mountain, you know? Feel like a nice change, forest walk, do that one. And I really like that circuit. Number one for me, is South Wellington. South Wellington is just, I just, you can't beat it for me in the Wellington Park area. You leave from that summit car park, heading south, 
The boulders are almost orange there. They're not your usual dolerite around there. It's quite interesting. It's, it makes for a really scenic walk. And then when you get to South Wellington, it just gets even better. You know, the side trip to Smith's Monument, you should do it. It's a good side trip. And then if you make a small little detour off the ice house track, and then you follow a canned route, you get to this area where there are these amazing rock pillars, and just the, I just can't have no words for it. It's just one of the most amazing places I've been to in Wellington Park. You have to go there sometime. And not many people do go there as well because there's no signed track to it, it's just a canned route. There you have it. There are my top five must-do walks in Wellington Park. If you disagree with me, feel free to comment below or even subscribe to me.